The Dieckmann condensation is really closely related to the Claisen condensation. So what is the Dieckmann condensation? Well, what we start with actually now a diester. So we have two esters on the ends of a longer chain. And the chain makes a difference. So one, two, three, four, there we go. Here's this diester. And um, just like in the Claisen condensation, we're going to treat this first with base. Now I'm going to treat this with sodium methoxide. I'm going to match the O-methyl of the ester with O-methyl of our base. And we'll need a second step, something like HCl in water. Uh, it could be sulfuric acid in water. And what we're going to get is a cyclic product. Wow, that looks crazy, but it's, it's not that crazy. We have an ester, and that ester has an alpha and beta carbon. And so what we form is actually a keto ester. And in that sense, this is very much like a Claisen condensation. So how, how does this work? Okay, let's draw out our structure again. These are bigger structures. Zigzag down. And we're going to treat this with sodium methoxide. I'm getting sloppy here, but you can tell what I'm doing. So, first step of the Claisen was deprotonate to make an enolate. First step of the Dieckmann is to deprotonate and make an enolate. This enolate forms. It is a nucleophile, so it's looking for an electrophile. And as it turns out, down the chain in the molecule, we have an electrophile, a carbonyl. So let's see how far away it is. It's one, two, three four, five. It's five atoms away. This To make this attack, we're going to have to make a five-membered ring. Now, that's just fine because five-membered rings are pretty good. That's pretty good ring size in organic chemistry. Um, so are sixes. So, so this is a good ring size. If it weren't a good ring size, this reaction would not work. So let's draw. So we get this ester, and off carbon one, I'm just going to go ahead and, and draw a five-membered ring because we know we're going to form a five-membered ring. Let's renumber our carbons. One, two, three, four, five. And so at carbon five, we should have an O- minus coming off. That's our tetrahedral intermediate, O-. minus. And there's still an OCH3 group there because we didn't dock it off yet. So we form a tetrahedral intermediate. What do we do when we form a tetrahedral intermediate? We look for a leaving group. We have one. And we can kick out that methoxy group. So I'm going to wrap around to the bottom left. And what do we form? This is an alpha beta. I'm sorry, not an alpha beta. Whoops. This is a beta keto ester. Um, now this reaction, I'm not going to draw, show the full process, but this reaction wouldn't be done. Remember, this reaction is being performed in base. And this beta ketoester has a highly acidic hydrogen sandwiched between those two carbonyl groups to form a stabilized enolate. So we, that's going to happen. We can't stop it under the reaction conditions. So how do we fix it is we have a second step up top here. Add a little HCl and water at the end to protonate that, carb, uh, that enolate, put that proton back. So we, we've made a five-membered ring here. Yeah, when you make uh, rings through a Claisen condensation, do an intramolecular Claisen, they call that a Dieckmann. But it's an intramolecular Claisen. So as it turns out, you can't just make, uh, don't necessarily make, just make five-membered rings. You can also make six-membered rings. So if we were to do the same reaction and let's just extend our molecule by one carbon, and have something like this is our diester. This O minus will come in, it'll attack. And if we count out, that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Eventually, after several steps, we'd make a six membered ring instead of a five membered ring. But it's the exact same reaction. We just make a slightly larger ring for our beta ketoester. But these are all examples of Dieckmann condensations.